Hey guys, it's Kyle from Command Creativity, and today I'm going to show you how to create this, created entirely inside of Motion Fun. Alright, so before we dive in, I'm going to preface this whole video and let you know that if you're in a time crunch and don't have time to create this intro for yourself, but would rather buy an insane 80 pack of transitions for Final Cut Pro 10, which includes a fast zoom in transition and so much more, it'll be the first link in the description. And hey, it's 28 bucks, so I think it's highly worth the price for all that you'll get. Okay, so feel free to check out that transition pack, but if you'd like to learn how to create the zoom in transition for yourself, you're in the right place. So let's open up Motion 5. So if you don't have Motion 5, it's in the Mac App Store for 49 bucks, super great value for all that you can do. So once Motion is opened up, you'll create a Final Cut Pro transition. So the process of creating this transition is relatively easy. I think you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly. But hey, if you have any questions, drop those in the comments section below. I'll try my best to answer all of your questions. So preset of broadcast HD 1080, go 4K if you're feeling like it. I'm just gonna stick with 1080, that's all I need. A frame rate of 30 FPS in a second, or a duration of two seconds. So final cut transition, make sure all that stuff is good. Tap on open when you're ready. And uh, first of all, let's click on this 100% and fit this view to our canvas so we can see everything that's going on. Nice. So one other thing I do want to bring up is uh, you kind of need a couple pieces of footage. So on uh, pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S.com, I got these two images right here of New York City. Pretty fantastic quality. These were entirely free, don't need any attribution. Make sure to check on those attribution terms on their website. I'll pop a link for that below as well as a project file. All the goodies are in the description. So feel free to uh, check that out after this tutorial or during if you want that. So, <laughs> all right. So inside of our project, let's just rename, make sure we're organized and call this group our stock footage. S-T-O-C-K, boom, there we go. And uh, inside of Final Cut, when you import this, this will be your first clip, that'll be your second clip. Pretty self-explanatory. Now click on Transition A, I'm just gonna rename that to A. Transition B, um, call this B. Great, and now let's link our footage in there. So our first clip, feel free to click and drag that in, and click and drag that in. You'll see that little arrow right there, that'll let you know that you're linking it to the clip. All right, so let's full screen that and uh, and boom, we're ready to rock and roll. So now I just want to click and drag our B um, footage to start at frame 20. So basically this tutorial will be pretty quick, but our zoom in will happen right there. So just to give you a little heads up of what's going on. All right, so our first step is to go to add object right here, click on that guy, click on camera, and switch this project to 3D because everything 3D is that much cooler. All right, not really, but uh, 3D is pretty cool. <laughs> so click on your camera right here, click on our active camera right here, and then click on perspective view. Now, just a little heads up on the camera, our perspective view allows us to move around our scene without messing up with the active camera sees. So you can see all of our different layers and things of that nature. So quick little camera lesson for you as well. Got that for free, so boom. All right, and then let's click on this little arrow here, so in between our A and B, just to scale up so we can see all of our different items. All right, so the first thing, let's go back to our active camera, basically, um, this layer is going to zoom in. So we'll zoom into the cityscape right here. And then our B, this guy's going to zoom into place from being a little larger. So that doesn't make much sense. But uh, click on our A check mark right here so we can just see our underlying image. Cool. So let's open up our, pers our perspective view. So basically what we want to do, if this guy's going to start in the distance and come in, we'll see the black background right here. And that's not what we want. We want to make sure our back image is seamless. So what we want to do for that guy is click on B, go to our help menu, and type in replicate. If I can spell. So replicate, just click on that guy. Um, so help replicate, boom, onto here, and there we go. You can see it's starting to do the job. It's not quite there. So open up our inspector on the replicator. Rectangle tile fill is totally fine, but we want to go for a columns of three and our rows of three. 
So right off the bat, it's not doing the job. So what we want to do is click on the little triangles here, drop down the width and height, and uh, from here, we'll see what we have to change to make it look all nice. So basically, go to your project and go to your inspector properties, and you'll see your width and height of your project. So I did a 1920 by 1080. If you did 4K, 6K, 8K, all those Ks, just make sure to look at these values because that's what you'll need in order to replicate it properly. So on our width, we want to go to our width right here on our replicator and make sure to go um, 1920 times 2. So feel free to use Spotlight. Um, so 1920 times 2 is 3840. So then change that to 3840. And then for the same thing for the height, so 1080 times 2 is uh, 2160. So enter that. Basically, we're replicating these um, to go across here so they're not overlapping, but it's going to fill up the whole project area. So depending on your canvas size, that's what you need to change. So it'll properly um, move the replicator um, seamlessly to the other side. So if that doesn't make any sense, let me know in the comments and I'll try to explain it even better. Um, I don't even know if I did a good job there, but, uh, but let me know. <laughs> so now what we want to do is uh, dolly our camera back here to our perspective and you can see these lines right here aren't looking the best it's really a rough transition now we need to fix that so there is a solution let me tell you that so library go to your filters and uh, go to your little magnifying glass it saves a ton of time and type in mirror so click and drop your or click and drag on your mirror onto your replicator and let's rename this, make sure to stay organized, and call this left. So basically, we're going to mirror this onto this side of the replicator. So what we want to do is uh, add one of these guys and make it line up with this little line right there. So go back to your active camera. And for our left, we want to go to our inspector. And uh, you can see our little icon right here. You want to click on that guy and move it to where it um, snaps right onto the edge and to the center. So move it from the middle to the edge, snap into the center. Maybe some of you are like, Kyle, I don't get those guides. So what you do, go to your view and show your dynamic guides and that should fix it up for you. A little keyboard shortcut if you wanna save some time. Um, and boom, we got that in there. So if we go back to our perspective view, we can see that this side is looking really nice. So perfect, we wanna do that for the rest of these. So then go to our library mirror, um, drag and drop that onto our replicator again, rename just to make sure we're we're doing a good job here and name it to the right hand side get your inspector and for our right hand side we want to change the angle to 180 degrees so basically the right hand side we want to flip it on the other side on the left it's already flipped so you can see that on the right side the angle should be to the left and make sure it's opposite of what the title is so right angle should be 180 so it's to the left cool so then click and drag on this little indicator right here and move it to the right hand side make sure it clicks into place nice then we want to do the same thing for the top and bottom so click on this guy rename it top and uh, click and drag on this guy all the way up to the top ba -da 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 -ding, right there then inspector for the top we want to make sure we go um let's see what do we need 270 i believe yep so it's opposing the name so the angle is at the bottom when it says top hopefully that makes sense then one more time, just to make sure it is all good to go. Um, drag it onto our replicator mirror, rename this to bottom. Great, inspector, bottom, make sure it's opposing the name. So angle should be 90 degrees. So it's at the top and it says bottom. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, just wanna make sure this makes sense for you guys. Click and drag on that guy and uh, click and snap into place, boom. Nice. So then if we go to our perspective view, we can see that all of these are looking very seamless. So basically when this is coming into frame, it'll look like it's one gigantic image instead of nine separate images. So back to active camera there, nice. So that looks pretty good so far. We can click on the check mark to make sure our A shows up again. And, uh, and yeah, let's start animating this guy. So we got all of our preset things into place. Make sure to drag this to 20. Um, and now let's animate. So our A should be going to um, about one second and then trim that guy. And then our replicator should be starting at 20 and go all the way to the end. All right, so what we wanna do is we're gonna play with some behaviors. You guys are probably like, 
Kyle, what do behaviors do? So what they do is you click on behaviors, you go to basic motion, you go to move. Basically, behaviors are a much more seamless way of keyframing, so you don't have to deal with those pesky keyframes. So basically, whatever happens inside of this little move icon right here is what's going to change. So essentially, from our direction, it's going to go to this value. So basically, we want to go to our position here, and I wrote down some uh, some position values on this handy dandy notebook. So we're going to go to 1500. That looks the best. So on our Z, double click 1500, and bam, that looks great. So if we play it back, it's going to zoom in. So let's start at uh, 15, 15, da -da -da, right there. And then let's end it at about 25. Great. And then one other thing to change, our direction is good, our speed, we should accelerate into it. So vroom, right into there. I like the sound effect, vroom, all right. So that'll, that'll go into there. Let's just extend it a little bit, maybe two more times. And then let's trim that guy. All right. So if you play it back, vroom, it goes right in. So sound effects uh, sounding good there too. <laughs> so now let's fade out our background here. So go to A, go to our properties and go to opacity, click on a keyframe there and uh, at 24 frames and then go to 27 frames and click and drag on the opacity, go to 0%. So vroom, right there. Okay. So that's looking good. The fade's a little long. So let's start the fade at 25 frames right there. Click and drag, and there we go. That looks really nice. Great, so for our bottom replicator, we need to do the same thing. So go to our behaviors, basic motion, and go to um, move. And now what we wanna do is I wrote down this value as well. We wanna start from a Z position of negative 3000. Great, so basically, it's gonna come in, that looks really stupid. So let's change that. <laughs> so click and drag on our keyframe. We wanna make it a little bit faster. We want it to end at one second. And start at, let's say, at 23 frames. So 23 frames to one second. So let's, let's watch this. All right, so that's looking okay. It's a little rough right now. The reason why is on this secondary move, we want to change the speed to decelerate. So let's play that back. All right, so that's looking really nice. Let's extend it a little bit more on the back end here so it slows down a little bit more. So if we watch this, that's looking pretty solid. Nice, so we got a basic zoom in transition and that looks pretty nice and I hope it was pretty easy to follow along with. Now, a couple more things to just polish this intro would be to go to our render settings and go to motion blur. And basically, this is going to make it look all nice and add some motion blur. I mean, when you add motion blur, everything looks a little bit more cinematic. Well, not really, but <laughs> makes it look a little bit more realistic. So we got that. Let's go to our render settings and go to a quarter, just because I'm editing here on a laptop. So that looks really nice, um, really seamless. If we want this to go a little bit longer, feel free to play with these um, behaviors. You don't have to mess with any keyframes except that opacity. So that looks really seamless and I really like how that's going. So if you wanna do a zoom out transition instead, you'd basically just be reversing what we did. And if you'd like to see a separate video of this, make sure to let me know because I'd be happy to create it for you guys. And then let's save it and add it to Final Cut Pro 10. So click on save here. And since we are working with the transition, um, it'll automatically create a transition that's usable inside of Final Cut. So now what we can do is we can create a new category and let's call this um, CMD transitions. So command creativity transition. So if I make more transition videos, if you want more videos, make sure to thumb up this video, give it a like and I'll know that I should make more of these transition tutorials for you guys. Press create. You can add a theme if you want. But let's make sure to save preview mo uh, save a preview movie and include unused media. Um, and let's give it a name. Let's call this Fast Zoom In. If I can type here, Fast Zoom In. Oh, man, I'm having a rough time here. Fast Zoom In and uh, click on Publish. And now I'll copy all those items, assemble it into a transition for us. 
and it'll be able to use inside of Final Cut Pro 10. So let me show you what that looks like, give it a couple seconds to render, and then I'll see you on the flip side, and we'll take a look at what it looks like inside of Final Cut Pro 10. All right, so here we are after we render everything through motion, and it successfully sent it to Final Cut Pro 10. You should get that little notification where it says successfully rendered, um, untitled, or something like that, and then that's the clear sign to hop inside of Final Cut Pro. So open that guy up here, so click on your window and bring it up. And now we're ready to get started. So if we look inside of our transitions library right here, we can see we have our created group in our transition. So CMD transitions, and there it is for us. Nice. So now let's go find that um, those stock footage and then import um, that into our browser here. So what we wanna do, full screen that guy and hop inside of Finder and open up our desk, desktop here and go to New York City. Let's just import all of these pieces of stock. There we go. So let's create a new project here and just call it Zoom In um, Tutorial. And there we go, HD is all good for us. Double click on that guy. Now we can enter our footage. So click and drag that guy in, um, click and drag our street footage into there. And uh, there we go, Command Plus to zoom in. And you can see it looks pretty nice. We got to import it. Now, what we need to do is click on our crop, go to crop and crop it to our canvas size here and do the same for the rest of these. Okay. And then when we navigate to our newly created group here, we can see our transition. So drag and drop that in here and then make sure that it's scaled to two seconds because our transition was two seconds inside of motion. So if we preview that, it's looking pretty solid. So let's go to render or help and type in render all. Uh, help render all. And uh, it should do a quick background render for us. And then we can see this inside of Final Cut with it being in full quality. So wait for that little progress pie up there to, to finish up here and we'll get started. There we go. So if we play it back, we can see that we have our nice zoom in transition ready for us to get creative. So. Now we can enter even more footage, drag and drop it in. Just go to our transition here and make sure to scale it to two seconds just so it's looking just like our project. Because if we did like one second or something like that, it'd be a little fast. So we wanna just drag it to uh, two seconds. So two seconds, um, there we go, boom, boom, boom. There we go, two seconds. Then if we render this guy again, we can see our full movie is gonna be ready for us. So I'll play that once this is rendered. All right, now it's rendered. So we can go to the beginning of our timeline, press play, and we can see our beautiful creation here inside of the Final Cut um, Project Viewer window. There we go, we got all of our transitions. That's looking good. The one thing that we forgot was to just crop this guy into our canvas size so it doesn't have any random bars across it. Now, one other thing that I can say is uh, you can check out Audio Jungle, and uh, I'll have the link below in the description, and feel free to browse our huge collection of audio, and uh, I'll pop that link below so you can find some really cool sounds and things that you can use for your projects. So feel free to get creative, uh, mess around with the timing and all sorts of things inside of that fast zoom in transition, and to go back and edit, right click and open in motion, and then I'll make sure to save it between the two. So basically, if we go back to motion here um, and we click on our project, it's gone because it's imported into here. And then you can right click open in motion to edit. So hopefully this tutorial was really helpful for you guys. Make sure to let me know if you have any comments or suggestions or tutorial ideas. And make sure to check out my new Instagram page that I just created because I'm going to mess around with IGTV and post some iPhone tips and things around those lines um, pretty soon. So thank you guys for sticking around. And if you did, make sure to drop a like and uh, throw a smiley emoji in the comments below so I can make sure that this tutorial was uh, good for you guys. So thanks for sticking around and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.